Rich Tarani with TMC here. Thanks for watching. We're at IT Expo 2014 in Las Vegas. On our program is Mads Lilliland with Adtran. Mads, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rich. Welcome you? back. Yeah, thank you. So uh, to be back. we're thrilled to have you again. Uh, tell us what's going on at Adtran. Well, we're uh, participating at the at the show here. Just did a panel uh, on cloud virtualization for uh, mobility, and we had a very good conversation with the with the audience in terms of how clouds is going to be used for scaling the mobility around the globe. And how is that going to happen? So, uh, as as Wi-Fi becomes more and more ubiquitous, we all know that it's inherently within the four walls of our hospitality, like here, like here, or schools or uh, 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 health cares or your enterprise, uh, I see that the world is moving beyond the walls. So you're now going out into communities, up and down main streets, uh, into cities, and for in order to handle all that capacity, you need to now bring it into the cloud because it's the only where it's the only place where you can manage such a large scale deployment. Uh, not only here in the U.S., but this is a global phenomenon. And what are some of the things that you manage in the cloud? So what we manage there is, is basically all the networking from a, from a Wi-Fi, all the APs, so the physical APs that are deployed, but we are also setting the policies in terms of the, the users that are coming in, their devices, how they're logged into the networks. Uh, if we're managing you know, enterprise or schools, or whatever, they'll actually have role-based policies depending on what they are. They could be teachers, students, staff, and you want to manage them uh, separately. And you want to also put security policies that, up, that would be ap applicable to them uh, as well. So the same thing would go inside the enterprise. So if you have your employees or salespeople, they'll have access to certain parts of the, of the company. Your finance department would have access to some other things. If you have guests or consultants coming in, you want, them, you know, you want to have, have them provide access, uh, but you just want it, an internet connection out. So you want to set all those kind of policies at a cloud level, so it's uniform across all the locations that an enterprise has. And that's, that's very important for global uh, institutions or a multi-state environment, uh, because you don't want to set policies locally. You want to have that uniform policy across every place where you operate. Compliance is just one reason why you would want to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so on the compliance side, especially uh, let's say in, in healthcare, uh, you want to make sure that the institutions are HIPAA compliant. So the technology allows the, the healthcare facilities to become HIPAA compliant in that case. Uh, but we've seen prior to u utilizing uh, centralized management in, in the cloud, as an example, if you look at a multi uh, site or, or multinational corporations where they would have their, let's say, their Asia Pacific uh, subsidiaries, and many times in the controller based Wi Fi, you would actually set the policies down at the controller level in a particular country. And that would differ even from the Asia-Pac headquarters and sometimes wildly differ from headquarters if it was a U.S.-based company uh, from what the, the policies were set. So now you can set it across. So, Mads, it's interesting to me. Uh, I know that companies that don't necessarily have cloud solutions sometimes will argue that cloud solutions don't work if the Internet's not working. Right. And uh, they, they cite that as a drawback. And it's in, with Wi-Fi, cloud-managed Wi-Fi, is a situation where if Internet's not working, you don't have Wi-Fi. So it's kind of an interesting thing. So the downside from right. a competitive standpoint doesn't seem to be there. It, it just makes sense to do it. Right. So in a, in a, in a cloud-based model, the, the enterprise customers, or you know, and I'm using that as a broad term, so anything outside of your, your home, uh, they can deploy it as a, as a cloud, as a, on a hypervisor platform in a data center, or they can actually deploy it on, a, on appliances, so servers that, that are just sitting there. Uh, there's, on the, there's really no downside, uh, even if the internet connection goes out, because that means probably a lot of other things are going out in your enterprise. So let's right. say you had remote offices, or if you had uh, real estate offices, uh, we then would have standby SSIDs that would come up so you could actually come on as a guest, as an example, or the users locally would be able to do all the work locally uh, in printing or whatever it is that they're doing. And then the, the, as, the, as the network comes back up, then everything syncs back up in time, and then they can communicate back out again. So, so there's uh, from, uh, I, I sometimes make a blunt statement and say, 
there's really no reason for any, any customer to buy a hardware-based, a controller-based based network ever again. In my opinion, those days are gone. Uh, you could buy because you can buy it as a private cloud within your your enterprise or or education or whatever it might be, or you can push it out into a a public cloud 